All right, Shalom. First and foremost, I want to begin by giving all praise and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rukakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Shalom to you, brothers that are laboring and pushing this word in truth and sincerity and with charity. I'm the brother Abraham from the camp here in GMS Chicago. Come to do another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit. Lord willing to be edifying. Um, so right now we are currently um, still in the feast of the blowing of the trumpets. Okay. And, uh, you know, the scriptures say in Judges 5 and 11 that in the place of drawing water, all right, uh, shall we rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord? You know, that place of drawing water represents uh, us in captivity, us in slavery, which is here in America. Okay, uh, we're rehearsing, all right, reenacting the customs, our ancient ways, the ways of our uh, forefathers. All right, which goes back, um, you know, back to our law, statutes, and commandments, okay? And part of that is uh, keeping the feast of the Lord, all right, uh, which currently we're in the uh, blowing of the trumpets, which uh, now uh, represents us preaching this gospel, all right? We're those trumpets, all right? Um... What I have here in the Bible Hub, this is Matthew Henry's concise commentary. All right, uh, commentary on Leviticus 23 and 24, which is uh, the scripture uh, uh, on the blowing of the trumpets. All right, so I'm going to read a little bit of it. It says, uh, the blowing of trumpets represent the preaching of the gospel by which men are called to repent of sin and to accept the salvation of the Messiah. Which was signified by the Day of Atonement. Alright, which uh, the Day of Atonement also is, is coming up. Also, it invited to rejoice in God and became strangers and pilgrims on earth. Which was denoted by the Feast of Tabernacles. Observed in the same month. At the beginning of the year, they were called by this sound of trumpet to shake out spiritual drowsiness. To search and try their ways and to amend them. The Day of Atonement was the ninth day after this. Thus, they were awakened to prepare for that day by sincere and serious repentance that it might indeed be to them a Day of Atonement, the humbling of our souls up for sin and the making our peace with God is work that requires the whole man and the closest application of mind. On that day, God spake peace to his people and to his saints Therefore, they must lay aside all their worldly business that they might the more clearly hear the voice of joy and gladness. Okay, so it's a very, very heavy times that we're in. All right. Uh, just us keeping these feasts and these Sabbaths of the Lord are very uh, powerful and very meaningful. Okay. Um What I have here is, uh, you know, obviously Leviticus, Leviticus 23 and 24, right? It says, uh, speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, shall ye have a Sabbath of memorial, of blowing of trumpets, and holy convocation. All right? And the way we know... Um, the Sabbath and the first days of the month is by the dictation of the new moon. All right, the new moon dictates the Sabbath. The word month literally goes back to the word moon. So every new moon is a new month. All right. It says, uh, "Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto the Lord." And uh, what brothers have been doing videos on recent recently is how Yahweh Shai ended these animal sacrifices, and now our sacrifice is pretty much uh, uh, the sacrifice of praise 
by the fruit of our lips, which is what preaching of the gospel. Okay, the preaching of the gospel. And here in Numbers 10, uh, the Lord speaks to Moses um, about the trumpets and their distinct sound. All right, their distinct sound. It says, uh, Numbers 10 and 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Make thee two trumpets of silver, of a whole piece shalt thou make them, and thou shalt use them for the calling of the assembly, and for the joining journeying of the camps and when they shall blow the blow with them all the assembly shall assemble to themselves to thee at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and if they blow but with one trumpet then the princess which are heads then the princes which are the heads of the thousands of israel shall gather themselves unto thee when ye blow an alarm then the camps that lie on the east parts shall go forward when you blow the an alarm the second time then the camps that lie on the south south side shall take their journey and shall blow an alarm for their journeys but when the congregation to be gathered together ye shall blow but ye shall not sound an alarm and the sons of Aaron the priest shall blow with the trumpets and they shall be to you for the ordinance for through an ordinance for ever throughout your generation so this is something uh we are to keep forever all right and here in these last days the elect are returning to, to their heritage rehearsing the righteous acts okay <clears throat> it says and if you go to war in your land against the enemy that oppresses you and ye shall blow an alarm with the trumpets and ye shall be remembered before the lord your god and ye shall be saved from your enemies also in the day of your gladness, in your solemn days, and in the beginnings of your months, ye you shall blow the trumpets over the burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they might be to you for a memorial before your God. I am the Lord your God. All right. So the the uh, sounding of the trumpets, all right, had their different meanings. Okay, for the assembly, uh, for um. For the calling of the assembly of the people, all right. Which what we what are we doing? You know, calling for our people to come back to their heritage, to the to our law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, that's part of our job. All right, and you know the elect is going to hear the voice of the Lord. All right, because it says His sheep hear His voice, and what the prophets are the mouthpiece of the Lord. They're the spokesmen. For the Lord Alright So The elect No matter what Will hear this Alright Also when uh, the, Any king Prince Coming in uh, To the city You know Trumpets of alarm For war All these things uh, These trumpets had Their sound And distinct Meanings Alright And what we're doing now is sounding of a trumpet. Okay. Let's get um, Isaiah. fifty-eight, one. Cry aloud, spare not, lift up thy voice like a trumpet, and show my people their transgressions, and the house of Jacob their sins. Yet they seek, yet they seek me daily, and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness. And forsook not the ordinance of their God. They ask of me the ordinance of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. So we are to what? Cry aloud, spare not, lift up our voice like a trumpet. To show our people their sins and their transgressions. Alright. So uh, our job is, uh, you know, it, it's a lot. You know, it, it's a lot because... You know, we're ushering the kingdom of heaven, the return of Yahweh Pashim Yahweh Shai. All right. First and foremost, showing our people their transgressions, showing the other nations their judgment, starting with Esau Edom. Okay. So it's it's a it's a lot of work, man. It's a heavy heavy deal.
This is uh, Joel 2 and 1. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion and sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh for it is nigh at hand. Okay, so this is what we're sounding. All right, blowing the trumpet in Zion to our people. Okay, because it's an alarm. It's a warning, right, for you to get right, to repent because the Most High commanded all men to repent all right and all men doesn't mean uh all peoples as far as um heathen nations okay because the scriptures say in the book of acts as well that whosoever calleth on the name of the lord shall be saved ye men of israel hear these words okay it says a day of darkness and gloominess a day of clouds and of thick darkness as the morning spread upon the mountains a great people and a strong there hath not been ever the like neither shall be any more after it even to the years of many generations okay because uh you know also it says in the book of amos that the day of the lord is going to be darkness and not light you know woe to you who desire the day of the lord you know so what end is it for you you know it's not going to be nothing pretty it's not going to be sunshine and rainbows. All right. Most High coming with the sword. He's coming for blood. He's coming for vengeance. All right. This is what we're warning the people about. But they don't want to hear it. All right. And, but that's just because they love this place. They don't want to leave this place. They don't want this place uh, to be destroyed. They want this place to continue forever. Our right? people are happy here in captivity. Especially our people. Because they're simple. All right. Now let's get uh, Amos 3 And verse 6 As it shall a trumpet be blown in the city And the people not be afraid Shall there be evil in the city And the Lord hath not done it Alright Because again the trumpet gives a distinct sound Alright And when you hear a trumpet of alarm A trumpet for war You know People are going to be afraid They run uh, you see it in uh, the TV shows, the movies, in the ancient worlds where uh, people were under attack. They would uh, sound the trumpet, sound an alarm. All right, the people will run back into the uh, uh, walled cities, the defense cities. All right, because that's where they'll be protected. And guess what? The scriptures say in Proverbs 18 and 10 that the uh, name of the Lord is a strong tower and the righteous runneth into it and is safe. So, well, um, you know, us preaching this gospel, all right, calling people back into their heritage, law, statutes, and commandments, and their power, all right, we're calling them, uh, sounding the trumpet, all right, and that strong tower is the name of the Lord. That's what we're giving them, all right, so that they could be saved, be delivered. But at the end of the day, there's a predestination, okay. There's a predestination. This is uh, Luke 13. I'm going to start at 2. It says, Yahweh shall answer unto them. Suppose ye that the Galileans were sinners above all the Galileans because they suffered such things. I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. All right, and that's what we're uh, commanding people to do, to repent. All right, because, man, if we don't, we're, we're going to perish. All right, and we're covered in iniquity. We're covered in sin. Our righteousness is as filthy rags. You know, we need to atone for our sins. All right. It says to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. You know, so we must continue to do this work. We must continue to repent every single day. All right. And, you know, really understand, soak up, you know, how heavy this thing is.
We have the Day of Atonement is coming up. So it, it requires all, all, all of you speaking to myself first and foremost. It, it's gonna take all of you to, you know, really soak all this up because it's heavy, man. We don't got too much longer here. We don't have. There's not too much left that has to happen um, concerning prophecy. All right, the MOTB, World War Three, Jacob's Trouble. You know, all these things are pretty much at the doors. Well, it's our they they're pretty much already here. We're seeing everything manifesting. All right, so gird up the loins of your mind. You know, continue to do this work, and we gotta endure until the end. All right, so with that, I'm gonna go ahead and give all praises and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahushai, Ba'ashem Rakhakudash, the honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone. Until next time, Shalom.